Okay, once the inspector came over, he let me know I should make this structure out of foam board. So I started taking some foam board and essentially made a rectangle for the main part of the building. And then I'm going to 3D print a facade for the front. Foam board is a really great modeling material. It's light, cheap, you can get it at the dollar store, and you can easily glue it together with hot glue. I've seen people make some really incredible things out of just foam board. It's just really versatile and lightweight, so it's easy to use. So if you're just starting out, foam board might be something good for you. So next I started to design a piece for the front of this building and I use an app on my iPad called Shaper 3D to make quick and easy designs and this is kind of what it looked like. I mocked up the design for the rest of the building and then made the front in front of it. I then bring it into 3D printer slicer to set it up for how it's going to print. And you can set all of your settings here. I'm really excited to show you a new 3D printer because this video is actually sponsored by Anchor Make. This is the Anchor Make M5 3D printer, and I've had a lot of fun playing with it so far. It really brings this interesting blend of fast 3D printing and easy to use 3D printing. It comes mostly assembled. You basically just have to put this onto the base, screw in a couple screws, plug in a couple cables, and it's ready to go. Even in the slicer, there's this easy mode where it basically just figures out a lot of these settings for you. You tell it generally what you want, and you're off to printing. This gets you prints really fast, especially for somebody that's not been used to 3D printers or really had any experience with it. It's just easy to use as well with things like the flexible build plate. Usually when the print ends, you just pop this off and it's very easy to get the print off of this thing and then you slap it back on. It also has some AI detection of things like when your filament either breaks or runs out, it'll stop the print, let you know so you can add more filament and continue printing. Along with the AI detection, there's also detection with the camera with AI that helps to possibly detect things like failed prints, um, stringing, different things, just like the spaghetti problem. So having some of those early AI detection features is actually pretty cool as well. I do wanna mention that they have a pretty sweet app on the computer and on your phone that you can monitor, you can change print settings. There's a camera on this thing. So it's really easy to see how your print is doing. But there's also kind of like a marketplace on there of models that you can only find on there that are really easy. You can basically just click on one from the app on your phone and send it right to your printer with pretty good quality as well. I think this printer is especially interesting to people that are trying to get into 3D printing and want something that's easy and just works. So if you do think this printer is interesting, I'll have a link in the description to the Anchor Make M5. So go and check that out. And once again, big thanks to Anchor Make for sponsoring this video and sending me this printer just to try it out and make some models. So the printer really needs a solid base because of how fast it moves. So I decided to get this shelving unit and it actually worked really well. I can put a whole bunch of stuff on it. And then I decided to print a quick Benchy at 0.1 millimeter layer height. I think it took about an hour and 15 minutes or so. But at its fastest speed, you can actually make a Benchy in 17 minutes, which is crazy. And actually, in the fairly well-known speedboat race competition, people using the M5 were able to get it down to 8 minutes to complete an entire Benchy just by changing some different printing parameters. And it even seemed like the performance and quality of the printer was still good at that speed. This next step, I did get a little more technical, so I laser cut or engraved these pieces of tiny little bricks I think they're probably still too big technically in the scale, but they're going to work really well for the look I'm going for by the time this print was done. By the way, I'm always encouraging people to see if there's some kind of makerspace in your area. If you're interested in getting into tools like laser cutters, 3D printers, woodworking tools, anything that you might not just have it accessible to you getting started. A monthly subscription to a makerspace might unlock a bunch of these things for you so if you think a laser cutter is too expensive for you right now that's really a, a good option if there's something like that in the area but anyway i am now just taking some white paint trying to get it in the grooves and then wiping it off with some water and paper towel this just kind of colors in the lines makes it look like it's grout and it actually worked pretty good and it wasn't too uniform which i liked because it's an old building. Now I'm just adding some strips of MDF. They're gonna be basically like more of a concrete trim. Um, and so 
I'm adding those first and then I'm going to cover them with some joint compound to get more of that concrete texture. Now because this is a really large building in real life and I'm trying to keep it small, this is probably the smallest scale that I've ever worked in. I didn't start out with a specific scale in mind, I kind of just decided on the, the dimensions and worked from there. But at this scale things are definitely not as detailed and I'm making it probably look a little more like an, a model instead of totally realistic. If something like this was meant for a movie that's going to be completely realistic, it would be probably 10 feet tall or something ridiculous to get that kind of a detail. And so this is a lot smaller than my normal projects, but I'm having fun with it. I think it could be fun to have that little more of a miniature feel to it maybe. And also just not have to spend quite as much time, money, and space to create. So I think small scales are actually really great for people getting into this, where it might not be quite as realistic looking, but it's a fun way to get into it without having to spend tons of money, time, and storage space after the fact. There's also a lot of resources in the model train community. They have a lot of these smaller scales, and so you could probably find a lot of different brick textures and different things in your own scale for whatever you like, instead of having to custom laser cut something yourself. So as you can see, I went all over it with joint compound, stippling it on to get this texture. This texture is probably a little out of scale as well, but it works to give me the look I want. Texture also really helps to stand out when lighting is used for video and photography, and it just makes things stand out a little more, especially in the contrasted shadows. My friend Tinu over at Craftastrophe did this a couple videos back, and I've always wondered how it would work, but basically these are fiber optic cables. They will take light from one end and stream it through the cable and put it out the other end. So I just glued them all in place and now I'm gluing this panel back in and the wires come out through the building and out the back. This is again going to be set in my dream world and I thought these lights maybe flickering would be a cool effect for it. Next I decided to use this asphalt product. You kind of just spread it all over and use maybe a roller or something to even it out. And it can kind of look like asphalt. It's kind of like a texture paste. And it worked out fine. I'm just getting some kind of a surface because like I said, this is a small model and I'm not trying to put too much time into the filming of this, but I wanted it to kind of look cool. So I did that and then I started to paint some of those last bits of windows and things. And then I decided to add a few extra just plants, dead plants around to add some detail to the surroundings. At this small of a scale, things like windows and doors really start to look pretty miniature. It's hard to get the level of detail to look realistic. If it was for a movie or something and everything had to be totally realistic, it would be a much larger scale. So because I was just trying to have fun with this, I gave it a little more weathering and gave it a shot. Thanks again to Anchor Make for sponsoring this video and sending me their printer. If you're interested, check the link in the description. Otherwise, what do you think about this dream world that we're creating together? Let me know what else I should add, different things that we could do story-wise, and maybe build out some kind of a short film in the near future. I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you next time.